Hello everyone, this is Gail, and you know I have, if you've been watching my tutorials lately, you'll notice that I have been trying to get rid of some of my scrap, and in my scrap was this, I don't want to call it a cane because it's not the same thing all the way through, it's just a, a, a log of scrap clay. So I thought I would use this to make a brain cane. I don't believe I've shown you that yet. Um, someone asked me the other day if I had done one, and I thought, you know, I don't think I have. And it's kind of a basic um, cane. It's, uh, depending on the colors you use, can be very pretty. Um, you can make them with a Skinner blend, but what I like to do is I take a black and a white and a color. And what I like to do is, well, I actually need another piece of black. Um, let's see. I'll go ahead and condition some black. And I'll let, let you see my new pasta machine, which is just awesome. Let me cut my black first. You can see I used the one-pound blocks of clay. And this is my last black. I'm getting really low. And uh, I really need to... really need to get me some more because I don't like to run out. But let me roll these a little bit because they're a little bit thick to go through my pasta machine. This also helps to st start the conditioning process. It kind of, you know, gets it moving. Looks like I had some sparkle on my roller. But in doing this, I can also show you how I condition my clay. Now, this is my new pasta machine. The good thing about it is I can move it over to my work table so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to take each one of these pieces of black and I'm going to roll it through on the thickest setting. Then I'm going to stack them and run them through again on the thickest setting. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold and run through a couple more times to make sure that this clay is conditioned. And I will turn the camera off for that. There's no sense in you listening to my motor while I'm doing that. But I'll be right back. Okay, so I've rolled both of my blacks out and I rolled them out to a number three, which is the third thickest setting on my pasta machine. And I'm going to make a straight edge on each one. This one's a little wide at the end, so I'll just cut that off. And, you know, you're going to want them about the same length, so I'm just going to cut the other end of this one off because it was a little bit long. Now my white is rolled out to the thickest setting of my pasta machine, which uh, this is an atlas, a Mercado atlas, and um, the thickest is a zero, but it, I think the number one is, is about the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my white on top of one of my blacks. Then I'm going to put the other black, kind of got stuck together, on top of it. And let me make sure the white gets covered up pretty evenly. And I'm going to just trim a little piece off the end just to make sure that you can see the black and the white and the black. And the, the edges don't matter yet, 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the thickest setting and I'm going to roll this sandwich through at, an, at the thickest setting. <laughs> I'm going to set this aside for a minute. Oh, I love being able to move my pasta machine. I'm going to lay this over across the machine so it doesn't get messed up. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. First off, I'm going to roll it with my roller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a long sheet of this. Now, like I say, this can be a Skinner blend. I've done them excuse me, with uh, rainbow skinners. The next time I pause the camera, I'll try to remember to uh, look and see if I have a piece of that left. I think I do, but I haven't seen it in a while. But I've done rainbow skinner blends. I've done... Uh, just different colors of Skinner blends. But what I need to do with this is to get it narrow enough that it will go through my pasta machine at the thickest setting. And I think it's just about there. I don't want to put a strain on my new machine that I got from Ed Street. I absolutely love it. It is just awesome. Of course, I haven't had a lot of time to work on it lately. So let me put this over here. Move my machine back and let me roll this through again at the thickest setting. I tell you what, let me sh straighten out this edge first so I don't have a big tongue at the end. So now this end didn't turn out so great, so I'm going to cut this off, and I'll put that back in my scrap bin. But I've got this, and let me see, I want to cut the end, this is the other end of my cane that I didn't... Uh, trim before and I'm going to lay this on top now you notice I didn't condition this a lot and the reason for that is maybe before I do that I need to move this over a little bit I may have rolled it too much just right then it's been sitting for a while but if I start conditioning this, it's going to, that's more even, it's going to, um, make these colors start to blend, and I don't want them to blend. I want to see different colors. So here's one that I can save for something else. Now, I'm not going to move my pasta machine this time, but I am going to trim up some of these edges because we don't really need all this extra on the edges. You don't have to be precise. You can see I'm not being precise. I'm just getting some of the bigger chunks off. And I'm just going to roll this through again on the thickest setting. see 
see I have this long skinny sheet and I'm going to start at this end just because it's the straightest end and I'm going to start just you can fold you can bunch but just start doing some miscellaneous folding I'll start and see mine cracked because I didn't condition this if this was a Skinner blend it wouldn't crack because it would have been already conditioned by doing the blend and you roll it a little bit, you fold it back on itself, go around, just do anything you want with it. Just scrunch it up. And this time I think I'll go all the way around this side, then I'll go back on itself. Now you could put a black and white sheet on this side also and that would give you an entirely different look but because I didn't have enough I didn't do that. So let me just roll this around. I'm going to go all the way around one time and then scrunch some more. You know, you just, if there's no particular, there's not a wrong and a right on this. I am going to finish with the black on the outside, though. And you don't know what you're going to get till you cut into it. And I'm just going to make, you know, try to press from the middle out to see if, if there's any air, hopefully I can get it out. And you can take this down as small as you want. It gets more compact. In fact, I think I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this in half and save half. I'm not going to, but let me show you what it looks like now. This is what it looks like now. Now, is that not cool? But you can see the blues and the few little pinks that are in there and all the different shades. And then, of course, the smaller you go, the more compact it's going to get. Let me pull that black over here. got some air in this end so let me try to get as much of it out as I can so I don't have to waste too much I will cut this end off and what I'm going to try to do is get it as small as this end Let me cut this one in half, and I'll just show you the difference in how when it's compacted and when it's big. See that? You can, it's the same, but it's scrunched up more here. Now you ask, what in the world would I use that for? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, since I've got this here, or let me do it on a black, just a solid black. Say I've got a solid piece of black here, and let me slice off of this. You can take a slice. Let me get a second sheet of black. You can take some slices. Whoops. Don't cut my black. I'm not going to actually make a project with this. I'm just going to show you some of the things you can do. And even these pieces will work well. Alright, so I've got a couple slices here. 
And we're going to randomly put these here on this clay to make a veneer. You know, we've been working a lot with veneers lately. And they are just awesome to have. And you can roll this out just to flatten it out. And then, let's see, what's... I don't like this right here. So say I slice it right there. And I put that up on a, another piece of black. I wasn't planning on doing a full tutorial, so I don't have my cutters out. Let me see what I've got that I don't have to dig out. Um, I keep my Makins cutters in these little, not Makins, my Sculpey cutters. Some of them are Makins. But say I wanted to make a flower pendant out of it. I'm trying to line this up to where it's going to be on the block. Excuse me, on the black. And I didn't press very hard right there. But you get the idea. You can use it half and half on a shape. You could even put another strip down here to kind of make it a little bit more even. Um, you could take, if the black... was a little bit thicker. I don't know if this will be enough to do anything or not. Let me try. So say you like the flower. What you could do is cut off the part you don't want. Cut a straight line. Press this up against it. And then cut it again and line up your flower. And you have a little, some few little pieces here that kind of got mashed a little bit so it came out the side of the cutter. And this way they're both the same height. Whereas this one is like that. But what I think I would do is maybe take this piece of scrap and roll it. There's so much you can do with scrap clay. But I'd roll the black on the inside. And maybe do a twist. Sorry if I, I didn't look at my camera, but I probably got out of camera, out of the range. Do a little twist. Sorry about the phone ringing. People ought to know 
not to bother me during the day because I'm usually doing a video. You could put something in the middle. You could use a solid piece of blue. You could put a piece of gold. There's so many things you could do to decorate these pieces. So, like I said, this is not a... Let me come up and let you see these. Oh, there goes my cell phone. Somebody must really need to see me. Hold on just a minute. Let me catch this. I apologize. That was my daughter trying to get in touch with me. She had some news about our, our house, our new house. But anyway, it gave me a chance to look and see what I had left of my brain cane. And this one, I had, I don't know if you can tell, but here... Instead of the black, white, and black, I've got white, black, and white. And so this one left a white um, strip in there as opposed... Well, this one still looks okay. But let me get the larger one to compare it. But this one does have a lot of white in it, so I don't know that I would have wanted to double the white. But you can see here where the get my little pointer here where everywhere I made a turn you know and, and it came back on itself and squished it around and just did all that that's what creates this and it's called a brain cane I guess somebody thought it looked like a brain but it's a very versatile cane it's something you can do a lot with like I said this was just a sample of one of the things you could do I didn't really like that but say you could put a piece of, uh, of a color or maybe a, bl a pretty blue. Since this is blue, different colors of blue, you could put a little strip of blue here. You could do the same thing here, only this would be the same thickness. So I hope you like that. It's just something different. I've been trying to think of different canes that I could make. And my time has been rather sporadic here lately because I am working on getting the house ready to sell and also uh, the possibility of moving and putting this house you know besides putting this house on the market I got to get ready to move so just wanted something uh, that I hadn't done that maybe you could make something out of and make something pretty maybe you have some scrap just like mine this, I believe, was a Skinner blend because on this side it's got purple and it seems to me I remember doing a purple to blue Skinner blend. I do have one somewhere that was a rainbow blend, rainbow Skinner blend, which was, you know, different colors. I did them in order, in the rainbow order so that they wouldn't create mud. But, you know, you can make so many really neat things out of this. <coughs> so, hope you like it. I will be back again soon with another polymer clay video. Bye-bye.